Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another uh, edition of the show. And uh, we're going Indian on the wine here. Um, so a little history about this. Um, somebody I know that works for the same company I work for, but a different location, uh, was going to India for a tour, a musical tour. She's a, she's a singer. And I was like, so while you're over in India, would you mind, uh, you know, getting, um, would you mind getting some, uh, whatchamacallit, some uh, wine for me? And of course, I, I'm doing something else real, real quick here. And uh, she was like, sure. So I gave her some money to, uh, to buy some wine. I gave her four of the wine, um, wine sleeve, something that's like a bubble wrap in the shape of a wine thing. I bought them over at um, Container Store when I went to France. And uh, so I said, listen, if I give you some money, we'll buy some wine. So I gave her <clears throat> plenty of money because when I was kind of looking at the prices of some of these wines, they looked like they're in the $20 to $25 range. So I gave her like a hundred bucks. Well, it ends up that, um, you know, she, so she, she did that and she got me the, um, she got me the wine, but she was only allowed to bring back three wines. She said that the, uh, she said that the um, airline wouldn't allow her to bring in more than uh, three wines and why this is not uh, interesting <clears throat> the Google isn't necessarily working right now there we go anyway so uh, <laughs> while I'm sitting there trying to do two things at once I only have one price for these three wines because the, 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 the websites, well, one wine doesn't even have a website. The other wine, one of the other wines does have a website and they have how much their wines cost in the state that they're produced. Um, I should have looked, I should have looked to see what, how it's, how much it is in the province that they sell it in. That, that's kind of interesting. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then, uh, the third one doesn't have any pricing on their website. So, uh, we're going to um, hold on. We're going to try to find that out as we get to those wines, which actually the first wine we're going to have to get to. But I want to look this up real quick. Does it say? Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say anything here. All right. Well, um, I'm just going to go by what what the price is, and they're all about this about the same, no matter what. So let's let's kind of talk about Indian wine first, and uh, then we can kind of talk about the wines, the, the specific wines. Uh, <clears throat> wine in India was well, first of all, India is not known for its wine at all. Um, it's I, I've heard mention of that. It, it might be one of those uh, fledgling regions that might uh, kind of really come to more of an international. Uh, uh, notice in the near future um, but as of right now when you think about wines from outside of the old world India is not is barely even a blip on people's radar so that's why I wanted to do it because nobody's talking about it I love talking about things that nobody talks about so um, but they've been making wine in India since the Persian times it uh, it's speculated that the Persians are the ones who brought viticulture to India um, in, uh, what was it, the 4th century B.C.? No, uh, the 4th millennium B.C., I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, um, but most of those grapes were mostly table grapes or grape juice, um, rather than for alcohol. Uh, the first mention of alcohol is in the 4th century B.C. And, um, so wine has been part of their culture on and off, um, since that time. But then when India gained its independence from England, uh, the, the pads aren't 
Oh, it's kind of annoying. The pads aren't exactly lined up like they were earlier. Okay, I feel better. Um, but anyway, uh, so when they gained independence, uh, then there started to be a temperance movement in India. Um, India also did suffer from the phylloxera louse around the same time everybody else did. So combined with that and the religious um, uh, pressure to uh, on alcohol, they they basically banned alcohol in the country or most of the country um, for about what about 80 years and then the 50s and 60s um, is when they started getting a little bit more um, I'm sorry uh, in the 50s uh, is when they really uh, when this when the states were pro prohibiting alcohol um, in the 80s and 90s is when uh, they started getting more um, more into wine, they started planting vineyards. Uh, and Four Seasons, I think, was one of the first ones. Sula was one of the first ones. Well, the, some of these were some of the first ones. There aren't too many there. So a lot of them are going to be the first ones. Uh, most of India is not conducive to wine growing or grape growing for wines. Um, it's really kind of confined to the south um, western part of India, where there's a you know, big chunk of India is, is considered a wine growing region. Um, and then the farthest, the farthest northern regions of India. Um, hopefully, I've, I remember to put the map over here. Um, but we've got Kashmir, Punjab, uh, Maharashtra. Did I even try to work on that? Maharashtra. That's it. Uh, Andhra Pradesh, Goa, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. Please don't butcher me if I can. If I mess up any of those pronunciations um, but those are the main wine regions in India um, and the, all the wines that we got today are from the Maharashtra um, region and they're near uh, a lot of them are near the town of uh, Nasik so um, it's pretty it's it's spelt it looks like it's spelt a couple of different ways um, any s-h-i-k I've also seen any i-s any N-A-S-I-K, but from my understanding it's pronounced Nasik, um, not, not Nashik. But um, <clears throat> around that area is where a lot of these wines are from. Uh, they, they grow a lot of the common uh, varietals. So you got Chardonnay, you got uh, Sauvignon Blanc, you got Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, what we have today is a Chenin Blanc and two Shirazes. They're using Shiraz on these two uh, bottles rather than Syrah. So, uh, I think it's kind of an attempt to kind of have that new world type of, of uh, wording. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting, and I, I can't figure out why necessarily, is that um, all of these wines, they say, uh, uh, they all have at least this much on there. Not for sale in the Maharashtra state, for sale in West Bengal state only. West Bengal is not west of there. West Bengal is on the eastern side of India, almost, you know, the very farthest eastern part of India is where West Bengal is. So I don't know why it's that way. I don't know if it's similar to like the for sale in Texas only thing. Um, well, it can't be because for sale in Texas only means that not all the grapes or not at least, at least 70, at least, I'm sorry, at least 26% of the grapes came from outside of Texas. Um, because I'm going to guess there's still a lot of alcohol laws involved. Um, for some reason, these particular bottlings may have only been available in Bengal. I think that's where my friend bought them. Even though I know she was in Mumbai, which is near uh, where all these, you know, near the state where all these wineries are from. So they could have something where each each bottle is labeled a certain way that you can only sell it in a certain state. Um, maybe it's a way for them to restrict how, how wine is sold or alcohol is sold. Um, I can't I can't see that the Maharashtra state is dry because. The wineries are there. You can buy the wine at the wineries. They have tastings. They have events. So I, I can't believe that it's because the state is dry. Um, and I really had a hard time finding finding that out. So um, it's really interesting to, to see you know what what we've got here as far as um, uh, wines. And I'm really excited. Sula uh, has been around. Well, let's get into Sula real quick. Sula has been around. Um, and, and that is correct. I actually have a video on their website, so the founder pronounces it Sula, so at least I know that much. Um, let's see here. They've been around since the 90s. Uh, the gentleman that started it, 
And uh, let's, let me close out a bunch of these windows. No, I don't need them anymore. Uh, actually, we just find the, the, the one I want. There we go. So um, Sula's founder is Rajiv Sumant, uh, Samant, I'm not Su, Samant. Um, and he uh, went to school in, in California, went to Stanford, uh, got an engineering degree and uh, or he got no he got uh, not an he, he got like a master's in engineering um, but he went to Stanford got a degree um, bachelor's degree in economics and then he got a master's degree in engineering management he worked at Oracle for a while and then um, his family had uh, uh, 20 acres in uh, in the uh, uh, valley and uh, he came home and noticed that the area looked a lot like Sonoma and Napa, um, kind of like how like a lot of Texas winemakers kind of go, hey, this kind of looks like Spain or it kind of looks like Italy or kind of reminds me of when I went to the Rhone or whatever. So he said, hey, let's let's make some let's make some wine. Now he did, um, if I remember right, he did try some other, uh, yeah, he tried some other crops. They put down roses, teakwood, grapes, and. Uh, his family started farming mangoes, so they had so they, they had a lot of farmland there, and uh, so he decided, hey, let's do grapes. So he did grapes, and um, they become one of the largest and best known wineries in India. So um, this should be pretty good quality. And I kind of gave my friend suggestions. I had already kind of researched Indian wine because I was going to do that big. Um, that big 24-hour wine tasting thing. So I was looking for certain names, and Sula was one of the names that came up all the time. So I'm really glad that she was able to get some of that. Um, <clears throat> so um, they're, they're considered one of the top wineries in India, and they've been making wine for quite a while. So it's they've, they've had some time to really um, uh, work on their quality, which I'm sure it originally wasn't really that good, even though I think they tell you, oh, it was great. Probably wasn't. Um, but anyway, uh, let's check it out. Now, it looks like this bottle, um, it looks like they're available for around 10 bucks. Now, this is the, two, I'm sorry, so this is the Sula Vineyards 2012 Chenin Blanc. Uh, it is from Nasik. And um, now, Nasik, okay, so, so the, uh, the valley, the Mosh, uh, Maharashtra. Maharashtra Valley is kind of central east, sorry, west, central west uh, in India. And Nasik's kind of, well, there, there's, there's like things like an hour and a half drive south east of uh, uh, Pune. Um, it's spelled P U N E, not Pune, it's Pune. Um, and so it's about the you know like a, I think an hour and a half drive southeast of there. So and Pune is kind of in the middle of uh, Maharashtra. So um, just to give you kind of an idea of where it is, I'll probably I mean the map will, will have been up so you can see that. Um, but anyway, so it looks like this particular wine is around the. Oh, I keep seeing this. Where is it, Shannon? Shannon. So uh, it's available. Toast wines by taste. Uh, in the United States, they are selling it for thirteen dollars or twelve ninety nine. <clears throat> um, so it looks like that's about right, about thirteen dollars, twelve dollars for for the bottle. Um, looks like most of the stuff is around that price, and um, unless you want to go to England and oh, that's a case of six bottles. I was like, wow, sixty bucks for a bottle. Uh, Chenin Blanc, that's um, the grape of the well, not the grape, but one of the grapes of the Loire Valley, along with uh, Cap Franc and. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so uh, let's check it out. Now he did say that there. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. So the founder did say that he likes to make the wines in a certain style that will complement Indian food, especially with the spiciness. And that that I I, th I thought that was really cool that he's trying to create a wine that will go with the cuisine of, of the area. You know, if it's 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 the thing of if it goes if it grows it goes. So while there aren't any native grapes to India as far as uh, for wine grapes, or I think actually there are, but they don't make any wine from them. Um, where was that? Uh, uh, dang it. I think they, they talked about viticulture and wine. Let's see. Uh, 
oh, ta- there are, okay, so several to in, several indigenous table grapes that can also be used in wine production. Um, but most of them are, most of the wines that you're going to see are the ones that f- people are familiar with. Um, I couldn't really, I didn't really go too far into looking at these other grape varieties and the types of wine that they make and, and if they're good or not, because honestly, it's not going to appeal to most of our palates anyway. So, but he decided he wanted to make it style for Indian food. So let's check it out. It's kind of a, a, a mustiness to it. Which I, I find a little bit, almost like um, cantaloupe rind and a mustiness to it. Let's try that little trick again. Yeah, really kind of like, I guess more of a cantaloupe rind and, and a bit of mustiness to it. So not very fruit forward on the, on the aroma, uh, which I find a little surprising because he did talk about having fruit forward type of wines or fruity wines. Um, not, not fruity as an overly sweet, but like, you know, fruit forward wines. Um, yeah, that's about all I get off of that. Let's see how it tastes. There's a soap, soapiness to this. Now, again, first sip of wine might have shocked the system a little bit. So let's, but there's like that, there's like a soapy plastic. And, and my boss will claim that, that these screw caps are what will alter the wine. So, especially on first sip. So let's sip again. Well, it's not much of a soapiness aspect to it. A little bit, but there's there's kind of a a plastic soapiness, chemical uh, taste to it. I, 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 you know, that was the initial thing. I get some good acidity, and there is some citrus to it. But yeah, this, it's almost like being in a, in a factory. And I'm trying to think of what kind of plant or factory or warehouse, almost like a rubber to it now. So it, it, it's, it's interesting, but it's kind of overwhelming for me. It's like, I'm not, I'm not digging this part. As I get more into it, it's getting better, thankfully. That aroma, that chemical type stuff, starting to get into more of a fruitier. There, there's, there, there's something chemical about it. it. It goes between plastic and rubber, and almost like a bug spray. Um, these are all things, um, and it's something on the tip of my tongue. It's something I I can remember, and I can't identify, but. Honestly, all these types of things are considered flaws or faults to a wine. So what's, what's the deal? Well, I've had the wine for at least two to three months. So there's no issue with the shipping. Okay. Um, we haven't had any wild temperature fluctuations in the house. Um, I did chill the wine. I know it's not cold now, but I did chill it. It's cooler. Um, so it's not, so it's not like I'm drinking it at room temperature. Um, so the wine was chilled prior to this, but there, there's, there's a smell or, or, and taste to it that, that I can't nail down. Mm. 
And the thing that sucks about this is that I can taste underneath all of that. I can taste that citrus type of stuff, that lemon and lime. I can get a bit of rock and minerality. I, I can taste everything I'm supposed to take, taste from a Chenin Blanc. It's there. But this other aroma is, for me, overpowering it all. And, and, and I don't know. I could have a bad bottle. It could be just that that's the style. Hey, I've never had wine from India. I don't know. This may be what he likes. This may be the preferred style, and maybe they like this type of stuff. I don't know. I don't particularly care for the wine. Um, I wouldn't necessarily tell you to rush out and find it at, 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 a, at a shop here in the United States or wherever or whatever country you're in. Uh, and I really don't want to bash the wine. Um, but there is something about it. That, that chemical type smell reminds me of something. I can't quite put my finger on it, um, but it's not a pleasant aroma or flavor for me personally. So it brings back our memories of some, of some stuff. Um, I almost want to say it's like that citronella candle, the citron, you know, the, you know, the ones that look like, look like a, a, a stove, you know, el heating element. I kind of think it, it has an element of that. I don't know. It's, I'm all over the place on what it smells like. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend buying this wine. It's one of the few times I've actually had a wine that I would tell you don't buy. Uh, buy it if you want to try it. You know, buy it. It's, it's, it's about $10, $12, $13. So it's not going to set you back a whole lot. If you want to go, hey, I've had a wine from India and you want to try it. And may, maybe, again, I might have a bad bottle. But, you know, Selvin Enclosures, um, Stelvin, whatever, the screw cap, they don't allow for any oxygen to get in there. So we, we know it can't be something where, where um, like a cork, where the wine's corked or, or air got into it. So it can't be that. It, but there still could be a bad bottle. It could be the batch, maybe <clears throat> when they bottled it, maybe something was going on. It could be how they're supposed to drink it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't recommend that one. All right, so... We're going to move on to wine number two after a short break, if you're watching on the certain whatchamacallits. All right, we're back <clears throat> with wine number two. Now, I did have a thought here about first wine. So this, this could be something that, that I might need to really just remember to not do. My allergist has put me on a, a nasal spray, and I did this nasal spray, oh, hell, I don't know, like four hours ago. However... I do, throughout the day, sometimes get the <clears throat> aroma and taste of it. It's not a pleasant taste. This could be it. I don't know. We're about to find out with the next two wines if I taste and smell the same thing. If I do, then I will reverse my recommendation on the first wine to say I would recommend it because, like I told you, I, can get, I got everything I should get out of that. You know, I got that great lime and lemon. I got some minerality to it. It has some great acid. So there's lots of stuff there that was really good. This nail spray may be overpowering everything, so that means no wine reviews when I do the nasal spray. Or if I'm doing it, eliminate that out of my my reviews. Just know I'm just know it happens. But it's supposed to help my allergies. I don't know. All right, so Nine Hills, Nine Hills wine. Another one that says for sale in West Bengal. All three even say this West Bengal only. This is a Shiraz. Um, this is from the Nasik Valley. Also, 2012 is the vintage. Uh, you should have pictures of all these. Um, <clears throat> now, this winery, um, it's hard to find anything concrete about it. Um, it was started at some point in time. Uh, it was owned by the Seagram uh, group. Now it's owned by Pernod Ricard. Um, Pernod Ricard India site is, doesn't exist. Well, it's under construction. They had a Nine Hills wine blog um, that has some stuff that hasn't been updated in, I don't know, almost a year. So there isn't much to tell you about this other than it's in the Nasik Valley, and, or sorry, it's near Nasik in the um, uh, Maharashtra 
uh, valley, so or state. And that's about all I can tell you. Um, also, I can't even really find a price for this one. I'm going to guess it's around the $10 to $15 range for wine. Unfortunately, my friend didn't get me receipts for these things, and she gave me a bunch of money back, kind of guessing how much she actually spent to the $100. So, um, and, and now looking at the prices, it's about right. What she gave me back is about the right amount of change, so. All right, so let's check it out. Uh, Shiraz. Decent color. It looks a little cloudy, but maybe not. Doesn't really stain the glass. Ooh, we don't want to dump it on that. Doesn't really stain the glass. At least I don't get the same stuff from the last one. <clears throat> but this smells like barbecue, like you're having a barbecue. I got a lot of smoke, a lot of wood, you know. It really, really, really does smell like, you know, a wood fire going on in, up in here. It really, it smells like mesquite. It smells just like mesquite. I mean, I'm at a barbecue joint. They've got the mesquite wood going on the pit. You can really smell that. that and that's the, that's the predominant aroma I get on this. It, 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 I like it, but I was kind of hoping I'd get a little bit more. A hint of some red fruit, but not much else. Really a, a, an overabundance of, of mesquite and smoke. It tastes like it smells, but I also get a little bit of tartness to it, a tart, maybe tart cherry, maybe tart raspberry. But really um, a very bitter, a lot of bitterness to it. Um, it really does feel like I, I kind of bit into the, um, the wood. And I'm getting a lot of, almost like, almost feels like I'm, I'm, I'm eating some tea leaves right now. Without the huge tannic um, feeling from it, though, there's some tannins going on. Not a whole lot. I'd call them about medium, medium plus tannin. Uh, probably medium plus on the tannins. They're right here. Let's try it again. Yeah, a lot of wood, a lot of smokiness, a lot of bitterness and tartness to it. <clears throat> this could be a wine that you need with some food. I don't know. I'm not super excited about it. I'm not, you know, I'm going to drink the bottle because I want to be able to really delve into this wine. But it's it's not been a it's not been uh, gangbusters for me on this wine either. Um, I want to say I get a little bit of chocolate out of it. And, and now these bottles, bottles, these bottles, these two have been open for hours. So again, we I know it doesn't air out that much, but you know it's not like um, it's not like I just popped them open. I can tell you though that the aroma. See, see, this is where you need to let wine kind of mature a little bit in the glass. The aromas of, of smoke and wood are, are, are dying out. They're not as prominent. They're still there, but they're not as intense, but they're still about the only thing I get out of the wine. getting better. It's calming down. It's, it's aerating. It's, it's evolving a little bit. This feels like it should be a wine that you probably, um, need to, uh, decant <clears throat> to let it air out. It's calming down. It's settling. It's, 
again, I'm not, I'm not getting hit as much. I'm getting a little bit more of fruit. The bitterness is, is almost gone. Um, there's, still, there's still a bit of bitterness to it, but not a lot. Uh, tartness, but it's still very woodsy, um, very smoky. Um, I'm not going to say I get any mocha or chocolate necessarily, but I, I kind of feel like it's in there somewhere. Um, it's okay. <clears throat> Would I rush out and buy it again? Probably not. But again, this could be probably better with some food. If I paired it with some barbecue, something that had a smoky flavor to it, something that had a smoky aspect to it, <clears throat> even if it was like a, I don't, you know, I don't like fish, but I come to mind smoked salmon because of the smoke aspect. So that smoke flavor profile, it might work really well. It might actually enhance the wine. You know, the wine and the food might work really together. Because that's one of the things about pairing. Is you don't necessarily want the wine to, or the food to overpower each, each other. One of the, you know, you want them to complement, even if it's a contrasting pairing, you want them to complement the flavor profiles. So, It's not bad. It's different. And again, this is a completely different style of wine. I mean, I have found that South African wines seem to not be my liking in general. And it's just how they make the wine. Um, it's, it's, what they, it's how they make it. Um, so, I don't know. Again, I'm not saying if you see this in the store, you need to rush over and buy it. But... If you want to try something different, go for it. I think it's a little bit better than the Sula, but then again, um, we're going to go back to the Sula here after I do this third wine. Um, anyway, as far as recommendation, uh, probably not. But I, I'm, I'm loving the fact that I'm trying wine from India, knowing that it may not have been the best wine in the world. But you know what? Hey, I can't like every single wine, can I? You might like it. I don't know. You might. All right, well, let's move on to wine number three. Um, this one actually has a website, just like Sula does. Uh, so I had a little more, little more information. And then I'm going to revisit the Sula wine. All right, so now let's go to wine number three. Now this is... All right, close all those. This is a wine called Four Seasons Winery. Uh, as far as I know, there is no connection with the Four Seasons Hotel. Um, this is another one of those wines that... Um, has wineries has been around for a while. Let's do a little rinse first. This is another, well, not for, for a little while, not a while. Not like uh, Sula. Sula's been around for, now we're getting, we're approaching 20 years. 20 years? Yeah, 20, over 20 years they've been around, or around 20 years. Um, Four Seasons started in 2006. Um, or, I'm sorry, in 2006. Uh, the UB Group, which I don't really know too much about them, uh, made headlines by being the first Indian company to acquire a premium French winery, Bouvet Ladabe. Um, and Bouvet Ladabe uh, is a sparkling wine uh, maker, uh, Champagne. And uh, well, I don't actually know if they are Champagne. B O U. I probably, I probably should have looked that up. I made the assumption they are because they were talking about um, making wine in the uh, traditional method. So let's see. Oh no, they're from the Loire Valley, but they make they do make some sparkling wine from that company. So I got a bunch of weird eye things going on right now. That's why I took my glasses off. I see some weird stuff. So I don't know. Anyway, um, so this wine is a 2012 vintage. Yes, thought so. Thought I said 2000. I think it's on the back. This was 2012, by the way. Uh, this was on the back. I think it was 2012. Yeah, 2012. Four seasons. I didn't. I thought it was 2012 also. September 12th was when it was manufactured. So that's kind of weird. It has a manufacture date and it has a batch number. 
okay? Um, but on the front, no, it looks like it says 2011. 2011, really, really small under the word Shiraz, which I know you can't really see it there. Um, all right, so Four Seasons, so they bought it in 2006, yada, 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 they bought, they bought the other place. Um, so that, that, that winery had been around for quite a while. And then, um, then, they, then they created, a, and then they have a company called USL Wine Business, USL, and Wine Business Entity operates through two companies, United Vintners Limited and Four, and Four Seasons Wine Limited. Um, and it's under the guidance of Mr. Abhe uh, Kewad, Kewadkar. Kewad, Kewadkar? Kewadkar. How about, how about Kewadkar or Kawadkar? Anyway, um, <clears throat> So the UVL, United Vintners Limited, uh, they import wines from all over the world. And the Four Seasons, obviously, is the wine company that makes the wine. Um, and they, they make a lot of different wines, again, using the standard uh, European varietals. Um, and they have, uh, in the process of planting 300 acres around their winery. Now, they, they design their winery like a French chateau. Um, and they've got contracts with 500 acres with other farmers, and they're looking to do another 2,000 acres. So, yeah. They're not small. Let's put it that way. Uh, they've won lots of awards, according to them. Um, so, I'm interested in seeing how they are. Oh, and this, this retails uh, for 500 rupees, which uh, currently is $8.78 uh, as far as U.S. dollars. Uh, that's if you buy it in the uh, um, Maharashtra uh, state. Again, I don't. I didn't see anything about West Bengal on the list for this for this website, um, so I don't know if it's what, what the deal is with that. So let's check it out. It it looks a little lighter in color. Um, it's not as dark garnet red as the other as the other Shiraz. This is this is um. Uh, a browner red it's more of a red okay dark I mean, deep red um, rather than the garnet or that purplish color <clears throat> and guess what the lights haven't turned off As I realized I didn't start my timer, I'm like, did I start the camera? I know I started the, the audio recorder. These are new batteries, by the way. All three of them are new. And uh, I bought a replacement battery for the one that went out. And the company that makes these batteries, I contacted them because it's supposed to be a one-year warranty. And I'm going to return the one battery and they'll refund me. So that's good. That's awesome. All right, so on the nose... get kind of a rubber ball aroma a bit of smokiness a bit of um, barbecue sauce hot sauce type of thing going on um, Tart, really tart, very acidic, um, woodsy. I've kind of you know kind of have that that like almost mesquite wood uh, profile going on. Um, a little fruitier than the other one um, very sour cherry very very sour cherry on, on, on the palate um, <clears throat> but it's also got this this other chemical type flavor to it that I've associated with some of the Texas wines that's not entirely pleasant um, 
it's okay. Again, it's an okay wine. Um, you know, I, I hate, I hate, you know, telling any of these people that I only their wines are eh, but nothing spectacular because they they you know it seems like they're winning awards for their wines, but um, I'm just not seeing that these wines are spectacular wines. Um, they're not horrible by any means, but. It feels like there's that, that candy coating aroma to it. Yeah, not so much on the wine. I really hate doing that to a wine, saying it's not really that good. But it's my opinion. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the Sula. So we're going to set it out. Hey, I got orange wine. Salmon colored wine, more like it. You know that's how some, some wineries make rosés? They just mix the wine together instead of having the red grapes, you know, having the grape skins actually stay in contact with the, uh, with the, with the wine. Okay, so now let's try Sula again. Much better now. Now I'm really getting kind of, like I said, I was getting that, that cantaloupe rind. Now I'm getting the cantaloupe. So it's either I needed my palate reset or the wine needed some more time. I don't know. Yeah, I really get some of that, that cantaloupe type of aromas to it. I really don't get the rind. I don't get that, that chemical type smell at all. At all. It's gone. On the palate, it's still kind of there. Just a little bit. It, it's, 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 it's calming down. It's getting better. It's not as bad as, as it was originally. Um, I, I get the cantaloupe more than citrus and you know, lime, lemon, lime. I don't only get that as much. The acidity seems to have dropped down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's overall, it's, it's, it's gotten better. It's gotten better. As I breathe out through my nose, that one aroma is, is, is still there, and I'm still trying to figure out what it is. It's not exactly that pleasant, but if I had to pick a favorite of the three, it would be the Sula, um, followed by the Nine Hills, and then the Four Seasons. My least favorite, actually the Nine Hills and the Four Seasons are, are kind of about the same. They're just two different styles of, of this Shiraz. Let's... That's unusual. Really like a cured meat, a meaty. Yeah, I mean, it's like barbecue meat. Maybe this wine needed to open up a little more. I don't know. Like sausage, like, like barbecue sausage. Well, maybe the taste got better. It's gotten better. It reminds me of a Texas wine. If I if you pour this blind for me, I would tell you it was from Texas and it was an average wine. Again, it, it didn't get remarkably any better. So yeah, one, two, three on my preferences. But as far as a recommendation on any of the three, I, I wouldn't recommend them unless you really are just wanting to try something from another area. And then, yeah, why not? They're all around, we're all gonna be around 10 to $15. Well, this was like nine bucks, so. 
it's not going to set you back too much. Anyway, uh, let's wrap this up. Um, it's probably close to an hour, I guess. And um, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by, visiting. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, everyone who's, you know, uh, I've gotten contributions. So the people that contribute, I'm really happy. If you want to contribute, please do. We've got the donate button over here to the right. Uh, you can do a subscription, $5 a month, or you just donate whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> of course, I've got all the links above to friend me up comments below and uh go spurs go that's right tonight is game one of the spurs heat that's why i got my obi-wan ginobili shirt on um i'm recording another episode tonight or today for italian wine so this one this show will be up after game two is up you know on monday after game two so i'm hoping we're up 2-0 or at least we split in there and then the following game well, that's going to, following week, that's going to be after game five, if there is a game five. So, anyway, go Spurs, go beat the heat. We can do it. And we'll see everyone again next time.